Hey there, it's Sarah, author, speaker, and advocate. Today I want to talk a little bit about how the way we spend our time actually defines us. So one could argue that the way we spend our time actually defines who we are. There are very few hours each day that we need to use to tend to daily obligations such as work, family, and sleep, and the rest is up to us, right? Even those standing obligations are choices we've made to get to that point. We've chosen our occupation, what we do to engage with others, and how much sleep we get. So each second of each day is a result of decisions that we've made either in the past or are currently making in, in our present. And these decisions matter. In the aftermath of trauma, perhaps we're spending too much time analyzing the past and how we've been changed because of those unpleasant circumstances that were beyond our control. Maybe we're spending too much time in our own minds, which induces ultimately anxiety and depression and creates an uncomfortable disposition in which we start to isolate from others. We need to learn to take back these moments and put them to good use before our entire life has passed us by. We can take these moments of despair and actually turn them inside out, allowing positive energy to flow in and giving it back to the world around us. So how do you spend your time? This is a very important question to ask yourself. There is a common thread among trauma survivors. Studies have shown regardless of the circumstances that they've endured, they are united in that they exhibit admirable personal strength, seek deeper relationships with others, and have a new elevated perspective of and appreciation for their lives. And they're also more in tune with their spirituality. And there is actually a term for this, which is called post-traumatic growth. When post-traumatic stress is turned into post-traumatic growth, some beautiful things start to happen. A victim becomes not only a survivor, but someone who thrives in their current state, whatever that may be. This person is happier than they've ever been before, more complete than they've ever felt before. They feel alive, connected, and fulfilled perhaps for the first time in their lives. How we spend our time in the post-traumatic state can actually make or break us. And in order to experience growth, we have to make time for it. We have to make time to self-reflect and understand who we've become and how we want to live our lives moving forward. And we have to set boundaries. This is very important. Many trauma survivors are also codependent empaths which means they have trouble creating healthy boundaries with others. They allow others to break them down and use them until they feel completely void of any internal joy. This happens time and time again. So the possibility of re-entering the same state of feeling completely overwhelmed and trapped in total negativity is highly probable unless healthy boundaries are created and sustained. Take the time to develop these healthy boundaries. Trauma survivors need to stick up for themselves. They need to know how and when to just simply say no. And they have to release any guilt associated with doing so. Only you can take back your time. Only you can say no and create these sustainable boundaries. And when you get used to doing so and focusing on self-care becomes second nature and a daily thing that you participate in, you will finally begin to feel like you can live again. Thanks and many blessings.